advice I'd give to all people who want to get into motorsport or engineering and really anything in life is uh, when I look at CVs of young engineers that want to get into Formula One, all of them have got the required academic ability, you know, they've all got the right exams and all that. What you need to show is, is that spark. Show how you're going to stand out above the crowd, show how you're going to be able to manage people because that's what you're going to have to do in your working life. So it's not just about you know, your academic ability, but it's how you're going to interact with people, how you're going to manage, because engineering is, is a lot about teamwork and compromise. You know, you'd like to design the ideal vehicle or structure or whatever, but you know, you're probably not going to be able to do that. So you're going to have to compromise and you'd like the ideal team to do it, but you won't also have the right people. So how are you going to lead those teams? How are you going to compromise? How are you going to get the best from what you've got? That's what's great about the Formula Student competition is it gives people the opportunity to show employers, you know, that spark. And, and that's what I always look for. And that's what I always say to everyone. Make sure that you've done enough to show how good you are. When I started, at McLaren, which was a championship winning team, still you had a drawing office with only sort of 25 people uh, in and I was the only aerodynamicist. Uh, I had a group of 10 people as my whole aerodynamics department. When we were at Tyrrell in, in 1999, uh, when Tyrrell stopped, I think we were 110 people. Um, now you've got a small team like Caterham that we just set up, which is 300 people and big teams of 700, 800. When I was at Toyota, a thousand people. Um, so actually that sort of management overhead, I mean, the cars are still fantastic technology. There's huge advances in, in technology and that, but, but really just the size of the teams at the top end of, of Formula One is uh, enormous. And of course that changes your role as an engineer uh, because you've got to become far more of a manager rather than just an engineer. I think the biggest uh, change in the next 10 years in, in motorsport is going to be the use of hybrid technology, energy recovery and, and electric power. Already in Formula One for this season you're seeing um, you know, far more use of hybrid power, you're seeing the energy recovery systems, um, far more complex control systems. Um, next year you've got Formula E starting which is fully electric cars which I think will be great uh, racing in, in inner cities and that. So I think it's, it's the use of hybrid and electric technology and, and energy recovery really and, and, and efficiency because as we drive forward um, for the whole automotive industry, the key is low emissions, high efficiency and motorsport has to lead the way in that. I think when I look back at the career, the thing that I'm most proud of is, is probably uh, setting up a Formula One team from scratch um, with uh, what is now the catering team but was at that day, Lotus Racing. To uh, have done all I did in Formula One and, and won races and been in championship winning teams but to sit there in your own office with a team of one person uh, looking at a bank sheet of paper and eight months later to be on the grid with two cars actually the only one of the new teams that got both cars to a classified finish um, that was a, a, a great achievement for me and that building of the team um, from nothing uh, to, to being a team competing in Formula One in a short space of time was something I'd never thought I'd be able to do. Uh, I think very few engineers get a chance to do. So uh, of all the things I've done I think that's still you know, my greatest achievement.